Hello, modern art and beauty. What is beauty? People think art must be beautiful, that beauty is art's main purpose. But modern art people, strangely, don't think that. In fact, in modern art today, beauty is completely out as a purpose. Beauty looks nice, and it's hard to find any problems with it, and that's a problem. There's an old modern artist looking up at me. Beauty that's in the eye of the beholder. Weird beauty. The beauty of ordinary people doing ordinary things. Tragic beauty. Pop beauty. Primitive beauty. The persistence of beauty in modern art. The beauty virus. How it survives and mutates. That's what this week's programme is about. The artists I'll be meeting mostly won't be at all frightening or insane. It'll be weird. And this is the leader of the beauty cult, Henri Matisse. He will never be annoying, just nice. He liked flowers and music. He liked lovely women and patterns and beautiful sights. And he liked painting them so they looked lovely. What was he on that, Matisse? The picture that sums up Matisse is blue nude. It's always on postcards and posters, and everybody knows it, even if they don't know straight away that it's by Matisse. It's not considered an aggressive picture. It's from the lovely side of modern art, not the anxious side. I could never understand the idea of Matisse. He didn't seem to have an idea. He was always talked about in terms of beautiful colour. I was waiting for the next bit. Beautiful colour and what? And then I got the message, it's beauty itself that Matisse stands for. This just looks like a kind of generic modern art painting, a corny model, corny, dauby brushstrokes. But now we're looking at it, we do see it. We see its roughness, the life in that laboured surface, the rightness of that colour. In fact, Matisse is beautiful because he's perfect. And the answer to the question, colour and what, with Matisse, is the utter surprise of his colour, the unrepeatable smudges and blurs and transparencies and half-revealed things making a harmony. He wanted the labour and pain of creation to be invisible, just pure sensation to be apparent. Why is that enough? It's just a fact that it is. It's the best modern art gets. It's a profound mystery. Matisse and now, they just don't fit. Even Matisse and then was an odd match. In his promo films, he was always desperate to be thought of as completely mild. Matisse said he wanted his art to be like a comfortable armchair for a tired businessman to rest in. He meant that he wanted people who live in an ugly world, the modern world, to find beauty in art. Very few artists now go on about beauty as their main theme. But the history of beauty in modern art is an interesting one, with many twists. Even with contemporary art, the ideas that make the art work are somehow tied to the idea that everyone likes beauty and everyone can't help looking for it. This is 1990s beauty. Beauty that says, be daft and rude, as well as beautiful. It's beauty that doesn't mind being obscene. Beauty will be convulsive, André Breton, the surrealist, said in the 1920s, or it will not be at all. With Chris Ophelia, apparently, the idea is that beauty will not be at all if it's going to be all high and mighty and up its own arse. But it will be if it's all amazingly intricate and decorative, and partly out of the arse of an elephant. The fact is, beauty is the stuff that mainly steams off the surface of Ophelia's paintings. Ophelia isn't a pure painter like Matisse. He knows what purity is, but he wants to torture it a bit first, subject it to impurities. The elephant dung was kind of tying in 
I mean, on one level, was tying in with the with ideas of of um, what might be considered beautiful. I mean, you know, I'd made this decision to make these paintings that were kind of really um, ornate and decorated and kind of full on about attractiveness. And um, I wanted to try to include something in the painting that would um, criticize that. That was like, like an, an opposite to it? Um, in a way, an well, opposite. That made, force you to think about it, what beauty yeah, is. Would, yeah, would, would challenge what you were looking at. So the beauty isn't too easy? Or... Yeah. Do you think that's a tension of modern art generally, that for beauty to occur at all in modern art, it tends to be in some kind of tension with ugliness? You know, from Matisse onwards or from... I don't really see the ugliness in Matisse. I think Matisse is so much about a kind of a luxury mm. and uh, kind of like really lounging type paintings. Whereas paintings in lounges, so people paintings lounging in lounging in front and of them. lounging, yeah. you know, painting and lounging. It's beauty in a different sense. You know, I'm finding a kind of beauty in in a, a, quite an urban setting. Beauty with a kind of an urban beat. For me, a degree of beauty is essential. But is it just like an ingredient, or is it the main it's overriding It's a very necessary thing? ingredient. And making it with the consideration that people will consume it with their eyes. And so I'm trying to make something that will stimulate their eyes, and I think something that stimulates someone's eyes is something that's beautiful. Ophelia uses low stuff like pornography and wallpaper patterns and day-glow colours and comic book drawing. But the way he layers it all together makes these things suddenly seem beautiful. Lumps of ugly dung, fabulous colour. Why would that be a good mix? Maybe it's an allegory, a satire on modern art's old entrenched idea of outsiderness. Matisse made traditional Western art new by mixing in non-Western things, like distortion. He put the Western tradition under pressure from non-Western art, art like tribal masks. That art wasn't even thought of as art. It was just fetishes and voodoo stuff. But with Matisse, the voodoo look became the modern look, angular, distorted, unreal, like Matisse painting his wife with a weird green stripe down her face. At first, it seemed very extreme to do that, but gradually, it became more normal for modern art to look like that. It wasn't new anymore. This is radical art, and so is this. It's radically beautiful, but we don't really see that anymore. We have to think about it to remember how it must have seemed once. Blue Nude was made at the end of Matisse's life but it's the culmination of a lifetime's obsession with beauty and making it new. Ezra Pound's phrase for the relationship between modernism and tradition. That is, modern art isn't about destroying the loveliness of the past, but about reinventing it to make it fit the present. Matisse lived in a house called La Reve, the dream. He was detached from modern life. He didn't care about the Second World War. His wife and daughter were in the resistance, but he didn't bother. He just lived in his symbolic world of beauty. He thought that was enough for the war effort. Somehow that sunk in as Matisse's message. It makes the most successful artists of now a bit horrified by him. Artists should be more on the front line, they think. But are they right? Here's our last surviving link with the Matisse world. Patrick Heron, writer on art, painter of abstracts, now in his 80s. Let's help him over the rocks at his house in Cornwall, where he's lived nearly all his life. Matisse's rhythms, patterns, colours. Matisse's obsession with the natural world. These are Patrick Heron's obsessions too. How he was hated by the art world when I was a student. He would just get up and say, conceptual art was boring. This can't be right, the avant-gardists of the 1970s all thought. They never thought about Matisse, and the only time they thought about Patrick Heron was to laugh at his hopeless formalism. 
How funny that I used to assume they were right. Now I don't. Everything in Patrick Heron's paintings is abstract and pure. At the same time, it all comes from things that he's seen. The rocks and hills and fields and flowers, his garden, the harbours, the sea, the light around the house in Cornwall where he lives. He doesn't sit in front of these things and sketch them, he just soaks them all up by osmosis and his paintings come out looking like this. <laughs>